This is the 21st of December, 1989 square or place. This is where the revolution sprang into life here in Bucharest on that date. So it's just coming up to two o'clock and the walking tour has finished here in Revolution Square. That's what's behind me. I've uh, got to say that uh, the story that the tour guide told of how the name Revolution Square came to be was uh, quite an incredible story and it explains in great detail the end of Nicolae Ceausescu, the dictator's reign over Romania and, uh, and how it all came to pass. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna try and convey that story. It's certainly a story that is worthy of any Hollywood blockbuster. You probably wouldn't need to change the ending very much because it's already very dramatic. But uh, over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna try and convey the story and give you a sense of what happened here. So the first thing to know is that Nicolae Ceausescu was the dictator here in Romania who ruled from 1965 to 1989 and uh, he started off his reign quite uh, outward looking. He uh, even had a meeting at the White House to talk to the American government, but after a trip in the 70s to North Korea, he turned his dictatorship into one of totalitarianism. He became very brutal and very closed. He, uh, even though he condemned the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia in the late 60s, he, uh, he actually cut off his ties with most of the countries in the world. So like a lot of dictators, he spent a lot of money on things that were either for him or were important to him. So a couple of examples are the uh, one Transfiguration Highway, which was a kind of road that he built. I drove on it earlier in the trip. It's kind of a road that doesn't really go anywhere because there's already roads that exist around the mountains um, to places like Cebu anyway so it wasn't really a, a, a road that was necessarily required but he built it anyway and as I say 71 miles of road dams all kinds of uh, fancy engineering going on uh, it could have paid for a lot of health care or a lot of schools here in Romania and the other example is the uh, palace that I visited yesterday the second largest administrative building in the world uh, why the Romanian government and dictatorship needed that, um, we'll never know. But again, it wasn't really about its usefulness. It was about the symbol um, of power and size. The dictator ended up making some really bad oil deals in the 1970s. And that led to more hardships because the debts had to be paid off. Um, one of the ways he did that was by rationing food and medicine to the Romanian people something that made him even less popular than what he was already. So with all of this going on, he needed a way to make sure that any dissent against him or his regime was punished in the most severe of ways. And he did that as a lot of communist countries did by using the secret police. So it turns out the secret police weren't all that secret, but then I guess that was the point of them. They were designed to strike fear into the average person. You didn't know who you could trust, you didn't know who you could speak to. And uh, if you did say anything against the regime or against the dictatorship, there would be severe consequences. The secret police would most definitely be knocking on your door in the middle of the night and uh, they would definitely deal with the situation. So that's a very basic explanation of who Nicolae Ceausescu was and why he was so unpopular here in Romania. I'm now heading over the road to the other side of the square where the former Communist Party's main headquarters were. Now, everything seemed to be going fine for Nicolae Ceausescu right up until 1989. What happened at that point? Well, the Berlin Wall fell in uh, Berlin, Germany in November 1989 and every dictator and communist regime in Europe started to get pretty worried by the events that were going on. 
So this is the former headquarters of the communist regime. Now, if we follow that story through from the Berlin Wall falling in November, in December, the middle of December, a pastor based in a little Romanian village called Timosora started to speak out against the regime here. He started to speak out because of what was going on. He started to tell people on Hungarian television and radio shows just how backwards and repressive the regime were here in Romania. Of course, there was no free press in this country, so he couldn't really start talking to the Romanian press. And uh, of course, because of that, nobody in Romania really knew what was going on around the rest of the world, and the rest of the world didn't really know what was going on here in Romania. Now, that pastor that started to speak out got the attention of Ceausescu and his government pretty quickly and the police were sent to a victim from the country because I think he was, uh, he was Hungarian uh, in the first place so they tried to evict him back but protesters turned up to stop the eviction and they were successful because there were so many of them. A few days later more protests took place and uh, Ceausescu because he saw it as a threat to his government gave the orders to shoot some of those protesters and actually some of those protesters were then shot and uh, some were injured and some were killed very sadly but it lit a spark and the protests then became more about anti-government feelings than it did about the pasta particularly so those protesters because some of them had been shot those protests started to flare up right across the country and a few days later there were mass protests here in Bucharest. So as said, Romania at the time did not have a free press, so how did people start finding out about these protests and the killing of the protesters in Timisoara? Well, there was two ways. One was word of mouth. Everybody was talking about it and word very quickly spreads throughout a country in this case. And secondly, there was a number of radio stations that were broadcasting from outside of the country that I think seemingly the entire population were listening to. Uh, Radio Free Europe and Voice of America, two very, at the time, popular but illegal radio stations, they were broadcasting this information about what was happening here in Romania. And therefore, it spread extremely quickly, as I said, to this very place that I'm standing in right now. And then on the morning of December 22nd, a hundred thousand protesters turned up and Ceausescu who was inside his headquarters at the time decided to give a speech to the nation and address his people. So you can see that balcony up there well that's where Ceausescu came out to deliver his speech and as he started speaking he was about six or seven minutes into his speech the crowd began booing and he had never ever heard that before nobody dared to boo him before but people started booing in this square as they were watching and listening to his speech and uh, the video of this happening it was recorded live for television and played live on television the video is now available on YouTube believe it or not like most other videos in the world are um, but the shock on his face as the crowd started booing was just incredible. Then gunshots were heard in the crowd. This turned out to be firecrackers, but at the time people thought it was uh, gunshots. And then mysteriously the television signal just went completely dead and the screen went black for several minutes until the picture was restored and it came back on. His wife, Elena, who was perhaps even more unpopular than he was she was right by his side and i think during the speech when she started hearing this booing she got up as well and started telling the crowd how great her husband was and started pointing at them and of course this flared up even more bad feeling amongst the people who were in the crowd protesting <laughs> populare din București considerând aceasta ca o Ce? 
So as the crowd where I'm standing right now started to become more and more angry, he then retreated up to the roof where a white helicopter was waiting for him. He then took off with his wife in the white helicopter and flew to a small air base just outside of Bucharest. So if that wasn't dramatic enough, just a few hours later, Ceausescu and his wife Eleanor were captured outside of Bucharest and they were sent to a military trial on the uh, Christmas Day, three days later, Christmas Day 1989. They were found guilty at that trial of mass genocide of the Romanian people and uh, both were lined up against a wall outside of the military courthouse and executed by firing squad. Even more incredible is that happened live on television. So as the Romanian people were enjoying their Christmas dinner, they turned on their television set, there was Ceausescu being executed outside of a military courthouse. Quite an incredible story and uh, certainly the end of one chapter in Romanian history and as always the beginning of a new chapter. So maybe just a bit of a better look around the square itself. There's the former headquarters right in shot now. The square really is more of a car park to be fair. It's, uh, it's not all that busy with tourists to be honest. I'm probably about 20-25 minutes walk outside some of the more popular tourist areas. There's uh, a monument here though that I will show you because it was pointed out to me at the end of the tour. I thought it was quite, uh, quite interesting in a way. So here's that monument I was just referring to. It's not very well looked after and from what the tour guide said it's not very much appreciated by the locals. It's in quite a state of disrepair. It's supposed to be the spear of democracy piercing through the tumour of communism. That's what she said. That red paint there is not part of the uh, monument by the way. I think it's just someone shot it with a, a paint gun or something. Tour guide said that it looks more like a potato being impaled. And she even referred to the red paint as ketchup coming out of the potato. In any event, as I said, it's not in particularly good shape. It's got graffiti over it. It's crumbling at the bottom. But there we have it. It is the monument. Nonetheless, right outside of the former communist headquarters that, that is now, I believe, the headquarters of the Bucharest Police Force. <laughs>